GPUs are hitting 3.3 gigahertz. We've got scammers stuffing rice in Amazon boxes, and someone turned a Steam Deck into a gaming keyboard. And Alienware just dropped a Lego PC build. You know the drill, let's get into it. All right, is anyone surprised at this point because AMD just keeps breaking records with the 9060 XT, check this out. The 9060 XT coming out with some insane clock speeds right out of the box. AMD once again, the first to top GPU clock charts with the 9060 delivering 3.1 gigahertz out of the box, 3.13 to be uh, specific, and some models breaking 3.3. We may argue whether this is a proper comparison. After all, you've got Nvidia, you got AMD and Intel with various descriptions for clock states, uh, base, game, peak, boost, and others. But let's talk about out of the box. How about that? And a lot of times when these companies talk about these clock speeds, they like to show off their highest official clocks. In NVIDIA's case, official figures are usually lower than real world clocks, but that depends on a case by case basis. Now, if you look back, AMD has a history of breaking frequency records by shipping higher frequencies out of box. So actually AMD was the very first to ship a one gigahertz clock speed out of the box. And it's crazy that in just 10 years time, we've now tripled what we've got coming out of the box in terms of speed. Here's a little breakdown, a little timeline here. Uh, 2012, you had the first one gigahertz. This is the Radeon HD 7970. Some people dispute this too. I'll check it out in the comments and we can all fight about it. But uh, this is what uh, what videocards.com has come out with. So with the 9060 XT, a lot of people are considering this card. Maybe you're thinking about getting this card for your own build or you're looking at a pre-built uh, with this card in it. There's a whole bunch of them out there right now. There's one at metapcs.com, just saying. You've got 3.13 gigahertz boost clock out of the box. And that is not it uh, because the card is also offered with factory overclocking. It's get you as high as 3.3 through the software software OC, so safe overclock. Now, future overclocking may be challenging because the 9060 XT cards do not seem to surpass 3.4 gigahertz. Therefore, the current gen may not be able to exceed 3.5, but hey, who knows what will happen in the future. It's wild to me that overclocking headroom is basically gone though. We're kind of nearing the physical limits of, uh, of what's capable here, it seems like. Now, the next gen of cards might surpass 3.5 gigahertz unless NVIDIA drops a 12 fan card that launches into orbit, then all bets are off. Let me know, guys, do you even care about gigahertz anymore? There's a lot of debate on who's first. It, no, Intel can break three gigahertz, oh no. So I'm sure this story uh, is going to garner a lot of, eh, 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 actually, let me know what you guys think about this, do you even care? <laughs> Someone just turned an Apple Magic Keyboard into a full-on gaming PC. Take a look at this. Uh, Steam Deck internals crammed inside an Apple Magic Keyboard create a portable gaming PC. Look, and this is clean too. Since the console's release, you've seen some Steam Deck mods, including uh, the Steam Brick. Anyone remember this? This is It's just like a basic, you hook it up to a TV or headset, strip down Steam Deck with only a power button and USB. That was kind of cool. You also had a 32 gigabyte RAM mod uh, for the Steam Deck. A lot of modding going on uh, with Steam products. They also are, are fairly friendly with Steam OS coming to AMD capable devices and that being opened up. Steam plays pretty friendly with the modding community, which is kind of fun. That's how you get stuff like this. This Reddit user created a makeshift all-in-one Steam Deck keyboard called the Bento. The Bento mod turns the Steam Deck into a highly mobile Steam OS desktop system with an integrated keyboard. Uh, so here's a post from Reddit. Check this out. I mean, the top down in terms of space is, is so compact, which is really, really cool. You can see the internals there. Uh, easy to pop off the top there not super you know thick you know what i mean still pretty uh pretty compact good question from another person on reddit in regards to the build he says super cool build can you charge it while using the display glasses you can with the dongle in the compartment it's partially why i added it so how did he do this that's the big question right uh, to make it all work he removed the deck's internal motherboard and other necessary components from the original clamshell, and then he placed them in a 3D printed chassis uh, underneath the Apple Magic Keyboard, which is uh, which is very cool. So all of this uh, that you see right here, I'm guessing is that 3D printed uh, part of the build so that he could uh, have some room there for the components on the Steam Deck. So here's my question for you. If you could shove a gaming PC into any random object, what would you choose? Let me know down below. We all knew Alienware had cool PCs, 
back in the day, but nobody expected this. Check this out. All right, this looks like a uh, product that was made to just uh, engagement farm on Reddit, but let's let's take a little peek and see what we think about this. Alienware releases a PC Lego set, Area 51 kit. It's got 318 bricks, and uh, it builds a Nook-sized PC. Uh, and you can buy it with Alienware rewards points. Alienware has added a tiny Nook-sized PC to its roster, and it's selling to app users for 9,999 Alienware reward points. This is not a functioning PC, uh, but instead it's a Lego set with instructions to build an Area 51 replica. Here's a few angles here so you can kind of check it out. I mean, this is kind of cool. The Lego GPU, that's kind of fun. The fans, like that's, that's kind of fun. That's kind of fun. I like that. Uh, and it's mentioned in this article too, but one thing that's kind of missing is you got to have a little RGB in a, a PC build. So I think for it to be a true Lego replica of a, a gaming PC, maybe want to uh, figure out a little bit of RGB. How can you make that work? That'd be fun. I mean that, and it would be kind of cool if it was actually functional. Still cooler than half of the Alienware lineup in the 2010s. Here's my question for you. Would you, uh, would you actually grind Alienware reward points for this or maybe just buy a Nook and throw some stickers on it? Let me know. Oh boy, here we go again. We've got another tampered 5090, but this time, it's not for Micro Center. Uh, earlier this week, we did a video on uh, what happened at Micro Center. Guy buys a 5090, a Zotac card, and inside gets some backpacks. Check this out. We've got an Oris RTX 5090 package, this time from Amazon, filled with macaroni, rice, and an old obsolete GPU. And this is the best line of the entire article. It's an impasta. Good stuff. You know, there is nothing, nothing like paying $3,300 for a graphics card and getting what appears to be uh, a meal prep kit instead. Uh, this happened to a user in the Netherlands. Check this out. This Amazon customer is taken to Reddit to complain that their package was missing their 5090 graphics card. And as described, it was, uh, it was, not, uh, it was not in there. Instead, this Redditor says, uh, they got a bag of rice, pasta, and a random dusty old GPU. On the surface, it's a very sad tale. But we also understand it's difficult for retailers to check claims. This guy had been saving up for a year, since last year, for a 5090. So this is a this is a big purchase for anybody, for the most part, right? A 50, I don't have a 5090. Like, these are, these are pricey cards. He's been saving up for a long time, and then to get this, oof. No great. Uh, at the time of writing, Amazon return is in limbo for this user. So uh, this user says, hey, having a terrible week and I've been losing a lot of sleep over this. It's a lot of money. You know, $3,300 or sometimes more for these cards. It is not a small amount of money. It's a big investment and people that buy these cards, you can talk shit on people that buy 5090s or whatever, but listen, it's a, it's a high powered, very high end card and uh, people that buy it are enthusiasts. And to get something like this instead, especially after saving for all that long, is like such a bummer, dude. Total price he paid for this, $3,360. So where does this happen? And, and this is kind of an important part, especially when you're buying from Amazon and some of these third-party sites, is there's a chain of custody of this $3,000 part, right? All the way from the factory, distribution, FedEx and UPS, it has to go through that as well. Or if you're buying from an individual user, it's touching so many hands, but it has happened where, you know, you have some of the transit companies actually involved in this from a, a random employee level. So it sounds stupid, but it doesn't hurt to just like record you actually opening the box. You can delete the video later. There's a lot of this going on and buying parts online these days, it just seems like it's gambling, but with some side quests, it's getting, it's getting weird out there. My question for you, have you ever been scammed? buying a PC part online. Uh, drop your horror story. Top comment gets uh, gets a high five and a sympathy like. All right, guys, it's going to do it for today. We've got a whole bunch more coming, so make sure that you like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. We'll see you next time.